Mr Kerr. I would like to thank uh, Fulton McGregor for securing this important debate to acknowledge Human Rights Day, which will be marked around the world tomorrow. And I'd also like member, draw members' attention to my declaration of interest as a trustee of the Freedom Declared Foundation, a charity which exists to support the right of everyone to freedom of thought, conscience, religion or belief. And I draw the, uh, the Chamber's attention to my membership of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And given the history and origins of my church and its early adhe earliest adherents, members will understand that freedom to live in peace according to one's beliefs and conscience, devoid of offence toward others, is a matter of deeply felt importance to me. The first president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Joseph Smith, declared the human right to exercise that free independence of mind which heaven has so graciously bestowed upon the human family is one of its choicest gifts. There are 30 articles in the UN Declaration of Human Rights. All of them are worthy of reflection and consideration, but due to time constraints today, my focus will fall on Article 18, which reads, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. I want to talk about an important aspect of freedom of religion or belief, and that is the way the Scottish Government has treated public religious worship during the pandemic. Since my election to this place, I have asked ministers many questions about places of worship, about the differentiated set of restrictions still applied to places of worship compared with other indoor settings, specifically in relation to the wearing of face coverings. I can't see any evidence to justify these differences, and answers, I'm afraid, there have come none. There was also widespread alarm at the Scottish Government's order to close places of worship and what that implied about how ministers perceived the human right of freedom of religion or belief. The Court of Sessions subsequently ruled against the Scottish Government's ban on public worship. Lord Braid said in his ruling quote, it is not clear that the respondents have fully appreciated the importance of Article 9, that's Article 9 of the European Convention on Human Rights. They have admittedly paid lip service to Article 9 by referring to it, but there is no evidence that they have accorded it the importance which such a fundamental right deserves." End of quote. So I asked the Minister, what lessons have been learned by the Scottish Government from this? What steps have been taken or being taken to increase the levels of appreciable religious literacy among, members, uh, among ministers and their officials? In the Western world, the growth of aggressive secularism is, in my view, an undisguised attempt to marginalise religion in the public sphere. Only last week we heard about the memo sent by the EU to member states asking them to stop using the word Christmas in the name of inclusivity. This is an absurd statement. Removing the word Christmas excludes Christians who want to talk openly about their faith. We should not regulate what members of the public can and cannot say, and we must allow the expression of faith in, in the public sphere to flourish. I agree with Bishop John Keenan, when he recently said that while freedom of religion or belief is, inclined, is, is enshrined in law in the UK, it is not always respected by society. Last week, a group of young British Jews were celebrating Hanukkah on Oxford Street in London. During these celebrations, a group of young men started spitting at them and making Nazi salutes, an appalling anti-Semitic attack. Earlier this year, vandals da damaged the Lourdes Cave at the Carfin Grotto in Motherwell. And I listened with interest to the speech by the new Member of Parliament for Adrian Schatz, a non Quasar, in the House of Commons last month. It was a deeply personal speech about Islamophobia, and she listed many shocking incidents, including petrol bombing of her, of her mosque. We don't need to agree with someone to respect them for who they are and what they believe. It is a fundamental human right. Respect. The United Kingdom is rightly seen as a global leader in promoting and defending freedom of religion and belief. But, if, but we must be alert to see that freedom of religion or belief is not only protected in law, but it is respected, appreciated and embraced as fundamental to our values as a people.